So, all right, welcome everyone to the June 18th, 2024 Act Finance meeting, usual Hyperledger Antitrust to Code of Conduct Notice. Be nice. And let's work through these PR leashes. Uh, I can drive, I don't know if you have more context than me, Daniel, feel free, or Jamie, or anybody else, feel free to stop me. I'll just go through the open pull request, see what's necessary in there, and then we can move on to the issues, see what, what to prioritize. Uh, depend about updates. It looks like we just need somebody assigned here to review them. Jamie's reviewing them. We... I merged quite a few yesterday, but this one just has a depreciated method for requests. So I just want to see if it affects us or not, but it, it won't, it won't be a breaking change, but. Right. Just test that nothing is. Breaking well, it's anything. tested with the integration test. So I don't think anything broken, but one of the methods is depreciated now. So we should check if. We use it or not. Yeah, and I guess the same is probably for the other one. That one I closed, I thought. <laughs> oh, why these are just major it? upgrades, and I don't know what because they're only supposed to trigger minor upgrades, but yeah. oh maybe you closed after I loaded the page. That's seems like it's the issue. These are the PR for the work you're looking after, Ian. Anything we need to be aware of? No, I'm meeting with these guys later this morning. Um, they're going to pull all of these updates into their own pull request and do the code cleanup, etc. There's one of the one of their older commits is missing the DCO, so they're going to pull all the code into some new PR, and then they're going to close this one. Yeah. There's more use working progress for pagination. I haven't really looked at these at all. I don't know if anybody has. Uh, I glanced at it. Um, it would be kind of nice if the integration test ran on it, um, but it's in draft state. So I guess we'll see it once it advances out of draft state. Um, nothing out of the ordinary or unexpected about the changes seems pretty, pretty straightforward. So once he's done with it, I think we can probably just go ahead and merge it. So. Cool. Yeah, it would be nice to to have this implemented. It's been like a long standing right? He did uh we did merge something for pagination, but he has all these sub tasks. So I think that there's some pagination now, but I I don't understand all the stuff he's doing. Yeah, I, I think the first set of pagination that he implemented was in the wallet lists for multi-tenanted wallets. Um, because that's that's one of the scenarios where it's basically unavoidable. You you have to use the listing endpoint in order to obtain certain information. Um, so I think he targeted that one first. Um, and then this is the the follow-up with with other listing endpoints. Uh, is Jamie? I guess this one can be... probably get merged now. Yeah, uh, gonna have to update the the branch, and then that should merge automatically, I guess. If the auto merge is enabled, I can't do it. But if you guys want to to click the pull main to the branch, that should do it. Uh, is Patrick here? He's not. Just these two <clears throat> PR from him. Last time we discussed the no transport one. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure. I understand where this is going, but like it looks like the, the changes are compliant. Yeah, the there same was problem with the DCO. Well, was there, was, uh, there was an integration test failure on the mm -hmm. last commit that he had. Um, the failures seemed unrelated. It was like uh, the issue uh, revoke 
uh, verify like round trip with endorsement, I think were mm. the failing scenarios. Uh, so I triggered a rerun on the integration test just a little bit ago, just to see if it goes okay. away. And then I was going to go ahead and merge this one after, after seeing those pass. Okay. That's all good. Do you know anything about these other draft PR? Um, so the proof key issuance option, I think the idea is that this will be superseded by some, some new additions that we put together as part of the did combi two PR. Um, so being able to identify uh, uh, keys within Akapai's wallet by verification method ID, which was something we needed for did combi two solves the same problem that he was trying to solve with this PR. So um, there's a little bit of extra work I think that's needed on top of what we've done for the did combi two. Um, but I think we've just left this open as kind of like a marker a of intent. Yeah. 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 So once once the new like the new block of Duke Combi 2 work goes in, we can close these, I guess. Or around yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yep. All right. Uh what is this? Work in progress. CI. Ian, you know where this is going. This is part of it. It's part of the big work that they need to merge back and Yeah. So the reason I had to open a a new PR was I was going to just PR uh, to, to this guy, but because I was building off of the work that he was doing, but um, he he opened this PR from his fork instead of from the what's cooking fork, and I couldn't oh. for some reason open a PR to it. So that's why I, I opened the, that other PR and just sent sent him a link to it, and he's going to pull all the code over, and then they're going to push it into the what's cooking repo, and then open a new new PR probably. Does these need to be closed then? Well, it will be closed. Yeah, but the, this one plus my mine will get closed, and then we'll open a new one. Okay, that's so gonna all happen just, at the same just time. Leave, just leave them for now. Okay. This is what you were mentioning, Daniel, right? Yep. Um. So a, a quick update on the state of this PR. I think in terms of like. The actual changes that we intend for for this PR to contain, those are all present. Uh, we're just going through and making the Sonar Cloud analysis happy with our code coverage, basically at this point. So we're going to add some tests, um, just to keep the the coverage to that minimum of eighty percent threshold. Um, we have tested this code manually, um, pretty thoroughly, and and since it's an experimental feature, we were initially thinking we'd just push it through and ignore the uh, the report, but uh, figured might as well. So uh, yeah, we'll just add some quick unit tests. How are you finding the solar cloud? Too naggy, too good, good, good to have it. Um, it's a good reminder. Um, and especially when it comes back in the report is like 30% coverage. That's a, that's a, yeah, a good reminder to maybe take a look at whether there's anything that can be done to cover. Like, I don't want to get too deep in like mocking things, I guess. Um, but I think we can put at least some of the pieces together and right. and test it out without having to get too heavily mocked. Um, so yeah, yeah, eighty percent is pretty high. Like. It almost forces you to test like uh, exception cases and stuff, which I don't think is super important. But um, anyway, we can keep it at this for a while. And if we find it's too strong, we can, I think you can just lower it a little bit. I think Wade can. He has admin rights on the Sonar Cloud. But. I find it's like 80% is about right on the edge of being almost too strong. But... All right, next one. This looks like it's somebody else needs to review it and, and confirm things are the way they want they should be. Or do you want to re-review re it, Jamie, Ian, and like a doc update only? The failure was probably due to some. Oh, this is the documentation one. They they're not finished it yet. They still got to do. 
I think I've already should, requested changes on it. Should be pointed like part of the same BPR then? This part is going to be erased and, and recreated, or are you just going to keep it separate? Keep it separate. They've got a different person working on the documentation. Or I don't know if I can say they've got a different person working on the documentation. They haven't updated this PR for weeks. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you should go in with the feature. No, keep it a separate. And yeah, there's this draft PR. Uh, so this one, there was some back and forth way back when it was first opened. Uh, Patrick uh, picked up kind of the, the spirit of the changes. And I think that's the same thing that's going to be addressed by the decombi 2 plus verification method ID identification for keys in the wallet. Um, I think I haven't looked at this in a while, so I, I, I am not 100% sure. I, I haven't read through Patrick's comments, which is now already a month old, but yeah, um, I think it's going in that direction anyway. Okay. Uh, so what you're saying is like this is similar to Patrick's PR is kind of here as a for posterity until the other one gets merged. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave a comment here and ask, uh, Patrick, if, if this is superseded completely by the other stuff that's going on, just to make sure. And if it if it is, I think we'll, we can probably just go ahead and close this one. Uh, but I'll, okay. I'll verify with him. Yeah, I'm wondering if also for the other one, just because I will, I know I will remember the moment we turn off the meeting. Maybe leave a comment in the other one from Patrick as well, saying like super will be superseded by, and that yeah. the conversation is very short. Yep. Yeah. All right. PRs are through. Let's look at the at the issues. I see a big one at the top. I don't know if you've had a chance to to look at it. We this came up last week, last last time we had the the maintainers meeting. Uh, the fact that there's some operations in Akapai that can lead lead to a state that is sort of like unrecoverable. Uh, we had this issue when posting cred devs or schemas for some time. I don't know if that's fixed. I think Jamie said it might be fixed, but the, the agent writes to the ledger before, sorry, writes to the wallet before writing to the ledger. But if the ledger write fails, it doesn't roll back the transaction. So you're left in a state where the record already exists. It cannot be rewritten. And similar and similar thing was happening for the revocation registries. I think this is a kind of like a more top level issue about auditing and figuring out what can we do better. I don't know if anybody has thoughts on these. Don't know any specific places where it's happening off the top of my head. Um, and I think like the new code's been way better. I think most of this stuff is in the older code, but yeah, I think basically we just have to try and find them and fix them if we do, but I don't know what to do with this ticket. The no red active registry one wasn't actually related to transaction. It was a bad query. But um Yeah, I was I was just thinking to myself as well that I think this is significantly helped by the uh the the new non cred stuff uh because we we need the right state to the wallet because we need to keep track of of private material associated with these objects so it's not like we can't not write it to the wallet before we go off to yes. sending it to to the to the network um but the the new non creds interfaces will reflect that those are in, in a, an initial state until they're confirmed to be fully written to the Okay. To the network. So I think it does help. Okay. There is so some guess... to do's in the non crits code for handling fail states that still hasn't been done. I might be able to tackle that stuff. But I just remember seeing those to do's and I, they haven't been done yet. So yeah, should probably be, I, I'll create a ticket for that. Yeah. yeah. Can link it this one and then we can walk through it. Yeah, my, my, 
maybe my emphasis was when I when I first described it was like on the on the fact that it gets written to the wallet first. Like uh, yeah, I understand that's correct. <laughs> it's just like the the state being in sync is also important. Uh, all right. I I think when the ledger is having issues with the integration test, sometimes that stuff starts. Like for a while, a bunch of the tests were failing, and it's because uh, Bond Network was the test Bond Network was having issues, and then it would get in these states where things are out of sync. So there is definitely some stuff there with the legacy code. <laughs> Anyway, if they start failing on the integration tests again, we can try to isolate them a bit better. What about this one, Jamie? Okay, so I don't think this is actually a problem. Um, if you go to, can you go up to the top and just click on the original comment? They're doing something where they're yeah, I scrolled down a bit. He's saying he's doing stuff with the DB and configurations and restarting. And I think that's the problem. Like the only way I could get it to do something like this was like manually deleting the sub wallet database. So I don't know, I can't recreate it. So I'm kind of waiting for feedback. He says he doesn't really know what's going on either. So. Okay. As of now, I don't think it's a problem, but you can just leave it open for, for now. Okay, just keeping an eye on it. Uh, this is the one from the field test from a couple of weeks ago, right? People are reporting it, trying to use uh, 0 0.53 credo with 0 0.12.1 Akapai, trying to create an OOB connection. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. It sounded like they needed to fix something in credo, but I have looked at it for a little while. So I, I reviewed this somewhat recently. Um, I think there is probably um, a change we could make within Akapai that would help the situation, um, which is when Akapai is receiving a did peer one, uh, it it defaults to sending an unqualified did back because the only cases that are checked for within Akapai right now are for did peer two and four and responding in kind with two or four. Um, so I think that's probably just the wrong default for it to respond to a did peer one with it with an unqual unqualified did. Um, so I think we could probably make the tweak of just responding with like a four if we receive a one. Um, and then that would help. Uh, but it is possible on the other end of the exchange as well with Credo to default hmm. to using a did peer four rather than did peer one uh, to help complete the exchange. Um, so I think there is probably a change that we ought to make within ACPI, but it is a relatively minor one. This is probably something I can take a look at. Um, I just I haven't had a chance to yet, but I, I think I could probably throw a PR together for this pretty quick. Yeah. Alexander and presentation presentation when non revoked is none. Uh, these are the ones that we mentioned last time that might not be following the best practices. I did, I have not checked what the best practices are, to be honest. I don't know if anybody has had a chance to look into it. I think I added the link on this one. Yep. Anyway, I didn't, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't read it. I just posted the link. Yeah. It looks like he. Oh, I have to do that. Okay, so we need to kind of like reassess what's going on here. Uh, yeah, he could say that he needs to fix it. There's like a way that they can fix it, but I don't know what. I don't know 
what changed. But they're basically sending an empty object and expecting it to use the most recent time for the vacations, I think. And it's not anymore, I guess. These two, I think we saw that there's open PRs for it. Is a key flag. Oh, this is the rekey bit. I think Ian was trying to get feedback from Andrew, but never got it. Yeah, uh, Stephen, Stephen was going to reach out to Andrew on this one. I mean, if we don't hear from Andrew, we can just go ahead and make whatever change we want, I guess. I'll, I'll ping him again, but I don't know about that. So. I haven't looked super closely at the details of this yet, but it kind of feels like if we got an empty object, letting it air out, Okay, maybe not. I think we're going all the way through to getting a verified status and it coming back is just false. But it, it almost seems like we should say that that's a, an outright problem as opposed to uh, just letting it go through quietly and failing on the other end. Because um, I, I think the, the behavior is maybe not super clear what it would be expected to do if it's omitted. So so it's it, it's, it's suggesting like some basic extra some extra validation to to yeah, surface I mean, it earlier. Yeah, and say like that the the two field at least must be explicitly specified in that we're not just going to do an implicit just timestamp of now, um, just to make okay. it more explicit. But again, I haven't read through the details on that. I'll I'll take a a minute more after this call and and read through and see if that's a valid recommendation or not, um, and leave comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the EPC working on these, it's not on the call. It's not, this is like for the LTS, uh, best practices. Then we have the migrations from old libraries. I haven't looked into these anymore, but it sounds like we should probably make a call on, on what what to do here instead of dragging it. Anyway, anybody com has comments? I haven't really had a chance to wrap my head around it. No. <laughs> Uh, we're getting close to time. Is there any other issue that anybody knows of should be raised as a priority or flagged? I don't. Um, there's a little bit of talk about whether we should, like, say we use Python 3.12 now and change the test run on 312 and I think it probably should work or not for the 1.0 release but right. I don't know what the preference is for upgrading Python I think we probably we're should 3.9 yeah. still now right we're on 3.9 yeah. yeah I think the LTS for 3.9 is until what next year in September or something like that? Yeah, I'm not sure. There is like upgrading Python does give you some improvements, like speed. Yeah, and just new features. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like October 2025 for 3.9. Okay, October, not September. Yeah. I don't think it's a priority, but if you can't upgrade, maybe we should. It would be nice, though, to get, like, 
several more years of like buffer before we have to do the next migration. So if we do the 1.0 and kind of like right after or you know soon soon after we have to move to a new release regardless, maybe we should prioritize that. That's my my thinking, but I realize there might be some some extra work under there. Yeah, there has been work so we can upgrade. So I don't know, maybe we can bring it up next meeting, but yeah, I think I hadn't thought of it that way before yet. Um if we moved to 312, I think that would be uh that would be a better story for like a long term service release, uh, yeah. uh making 1.0 an LTS release. Um, because then we wouldn't have to worry about Python version changes for four years instead of one. So that that I think that's the most compelling argument I've heard so far, actually, to to move or not to move. Yeah. I want I actually wonder how it would work if you have a, an LTS and all of a sudden you have an unsupported runtime. Does that invalidate the LTS altogether or you still keep it knowing that? I have never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that maybe we should we should bring it up. I'll add it to the notes uh, as a conversation item. Uh, I don't think the other items need need any special comment on the on the document. If they do, please feel free to go in and and add something. Uh, otherwise, I think we are pretty much wrapped up. Any final comments or items for discussion? All right, thanks for joining and we'll see you again, well, next week for Akapag and in a couple of weeks for maintenance meeting again. Yeah, we'll have a good day. Thanks, see ya. Bye.